Hi, I'm Amity. Welcome to our Design 101. Um, I wish that we could be together, um, but all of us have to stay safe. So we're going to continue on and we're coming to you from my dining room. So thanks for being here. Um, what I want to talk to you about today is design in a pandemic. We have managed to remain very busy. Um, in fact, we're busier than we've ever been right now. I think people are very much um, dedicated to uh, taking care of the home that they're in, re-envisioning it, making it work for them. Um, and they're discovering some things about their home that perhaps aren't working as well as they might want, especially if they're spending so much time in it. So it's been a busy time and we've been able to ramp up and stay safe and keep the ball rolling. So that's been great. Let's go ahead and begin with Elsie DeWolf, who is widely considered uh, America's first interior designer. And this is my favorite quote from her. I am going to make everything around me beautiful. That will be my life. So one thing that's come up recently um, for us, and I think this has been going on for a number of years, is families wanting to come together uh, with all the generations, multi-generational living, kind of an old, uh, a return to, uh, I guess, old times uh, when people really did live together um, with, their, with their families as they aged. And also, I like to think of it as a nod to kind of a commune type of living. Um, this is a very grand example of that. A client who bought a motor court um, and sort of picked the houses up, the little cottages that were there and moved them around the lot a little bit, uh, turned one into a space for elderly relatives, attached it to a main house that was new and built, made one of the cottages a master bedroom suite, um, one that is detached from the home, a studio for her husband to work so that he could be home all the time with him. And then yet another cottage was turned into a guest cottage so that extended family could come and stay close by. So a very wonderful, romantic, sweet kind of way of bringing the family together. This is that same property from the outside. Um, just makes me think looking at this about all the calls we've been getting recently with people putting pools in and doing landscaping and wanting outdoor furniture. This is all actually custom designed outdoor furniture that we did. Um, this is the pool on that same property. Um, just a very simple small pool but huge huge asset during these times and some more outdoor furniture. Again we designed all of the outdoor furniture for the space. Um, and it's really important that it work well. So it is good to treat it like you would an interior. Another thing that people have been calling us about, and this is a fun one for me, is uh, sound control in their homes. You know, I like to call this the tyranny of the open plan, but a lot of people have open plan houses and they work when you're not in them all day, but when you're there all day and everyone's running around, dogs and cats and kids, one thing um, that we have been uh, doing for people and recommending for people is that they put in stair runners on their stairs. And you can see here how beautiful they can be. Um, you know, maybe a, a runner down the hall and a stair runner and some area rugs strategically placed can make a huge difference. Another, uh, this is another stair runner that I love. I love that pattern. Um, another great idea for, you know, managing sound and separation um, in a space that's already built is adding simple decorative dividing walls, which is what you see here. It looks almost like parquet flooring turned into a wall, a decorative wall. And it gives a little bit of separation to the space, gives the furniture a place to live. And even though you can probably still have a sense of openness in this space, um, it, it, it's kind of grounding and separating and, and much more livable, I think, if you're going to be home all day. You've got a place to nap and a place to eat that are separate. I love this property. This is actually a California design. Um, so another thing that people don't think about as being a sound absor absorbing quality and also just a something that brings serenity to your life is built-ins. So you see on the left here, there's a whole wall of beautiful built-ins in this space. And the walls are also sheathed in wood. Again, sound absorption, area rugs here too, uh, upholstered furniture, 
um, I can imagine this space is very quiet and cozy and um, these things become really important when we're home all the time. So I also love that this built in here is decorative and painted a very beautiful glossy paint. So you get a little light reflection from it too. But built ins are something that can bring you a lot of sanity and happiness and absorb sound. One of my favorite materials in the world is cork. This is an example of two cork walls, actually one kind of a tile cork behind the bed there and the other, um, again, sort of large panels, cork panels that can be applied to the wall in a decorative way. But people don't think of cork necessarily, um, but of course we know it's a sound absorbing material. Uh, my floors of my home, all the way running through my kitchen and my laundry room and my dining room are all cork and they're very quiet and they behave kind of like wood except they're self-healing and then if you apply it to the wall on doors or walls um, you get a lot of sound absorption and obviously it's very beautiful it's a wood product okay i don't have a photo of the project we just finished yet where we did an upholstered wall but we did just do wall-to-wall, floor-to-ceiling, upholstered wall in a client's bedroom. Um, it's a really successful way also to kind of bring peace and serenity to a space. This uh, image here on the left shows an upholstered wall near a fireplace. So you can see it's a nice counter to the stone hearth that you see there. It's, this one's probably leather. And then I just couldn't help myself this very grand bed hanging that I love and think is so beautiful from Jeffrey Bill Huber. Um, who I actually used to work for. And this is one of his signature things to do is the bed hangings. I love these because they feel all at once glamorous, but also casual and sheer. So I, I wish more people uh, called at us to do that sort of thing, because I think it's a wonderful way to make your room feel taller and more glamorous and quiet as well. Okay. Again, we've been talking about upholstery um, for sound absorption. Just two examples that are great here. This gentleman here is a, a, a arranging an upholstered wall and using the fabric. Um, again, repeating that same fabric as a pillow on the bed, which I love. And then on the left, we've got an upholstered headboard running the full length of a room with the beds pushed up against it. Again, very nice and quiet. I know it's something that... Um, some people have seen in maybe hotels and it's not done well, but it can be done very well and um, it has a great effect on sleeping spaces. So this has been a funny thing that's been happening, but people are uh, not been home during the day as much and they don't realize um, what it's like to live in their home when uh, they have the oppressive Texas, Texas sun coming through the windows all day. They think they like the idea of the windows being open and seeing the view, but it's another thing when your neighbors are walking past all day and the sun's beating in and creating reflection. And so you're getting a lot of calls for window treatments, which I love because I love a window that has a little bit of a finish on it. Um, so these are two projects that we finished um, that have decorative curtain panels, which just gives a little bit of softness, sound absorption, softness, quietness, ser serenity for the eye. And then um, the one on the right also has a shade, which is um, a nice way to kind of block the light, block the heat and kind of control the, the light and get some privacy in a space. So it's a great way to really upgrade your house. If you haven't got them, I highly recommend them. And then of course, we've been getting a lot of calls for office areas, um, for desks, for finding ways for people to work from home. I love this little um, California office space that's just stuck in a nook. Again, you don't, you don't need to build anything in or uh, do anything grand. Just find a nice place to sit, make sure the view is right and the chair is comfortable. And voila, you have a desk, you have an office area. I just love this image. Another desk area. I actually just did this, something very similar to this for my son's room. I couldn't bring myself to put a desk in there, a full-fledged desk with drawers. And so I got in more of a work table like this, um, much more comfortable to my mind way to work. And he loves it. These are three office spaces we created in the last few years. Uh, the one on the left is, again, that material I was mentioning earlier, cork. It's a cork countertop. Just a little passage in a hallway where we added an area rug and a cork countertop and an 
a chair and um, the client was able to tuck in and pay bills and do work. The center um, is a much more formal image. That was a, basically a library guest room that we did for a client who wanted a more formal desk location just to check email. And she's retired, she doesn't need to work. She just wanted a little place to perch. And then um, a wonderful studio on the right. It's actually one of those little cottages that we talked about early on. Um, an editing bay uh, behind this built-in wall, a desk and a screening room as well, all in one. So just a wonderful, beautiful way to work, relax, and then you'll see there's a little surprise in this one later. This is a client on the right who um, you can see is very serious about her sewing um, and does it, I think, professionally. So. You know, your workspace, it's been fun to talk to people about how they work, what they do. Um, we're working for a client now who basically, for fun, repairs bikes. So how do we find a way to make a space comfortable for him um, that where he can pour chemicals and um, just and have a sink and have connection to a bathroom and maybe a shower? Um, so everybody's got a different way of working, and it's very fun to talk to people about that and figure out ways to make it work for their home. We've got a whole room dedicated for her for her sewing in this one. And then on the left is just a little, again, kind of a little perch. In the center here, you can see that um, that's the top of the editing bay we were talking about earlier. Um, so my point I want to make here is just, again, uh, not to continue to, to go on about the tyranny of the open plan, but what it doesn't do for you is give you walls for specialized spaces. So whenever there's an opportunity to kind of have a nook or a spot where you can separately gather with smaller groups and do things like watch television, this is a cabinet we built for to dedicate uh, to a TV area for a client. We've got this uh, napping nook at the top of the built-in and then a music room. Essentially, it's a long hallway in the client's home that we dedicated to music. It's got a piano and um, all of their instruments hanging on the wall, but there's a lot of beauty and interest in having those spaces separate. So you don't have to see them all at once, but you can visit them. Yes, lovely selfie of me. Um, doing an installation at a client's home uh, a few weeks ago and uh, we were doing art hanging and I just took this photo and sent it off to a few friends and thought I had to share it today just to remind everybody to really take this seriously and stay safe and we're here for you if there's anything you need we're able to work safely and keep everyone protected and help you make your home a place you really want to be in during all of this pandemic that's going on. So we miss you. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Um, go to our events page and you can see when our next video will be coming out. Thanks again.